About three months ago, you guys might remember, I did a video talking about how I wanted to try some experiments out here on the pasture and see if there was anything that I could do to increase the yield. I'm trying to do an introduction here and Callie is on the scent of something. I don't know if there is a gopher hole up in here or something, but she smells it and she's going after it like crazy. I keep waiting for her to come up with something in her mouth, but she hasn't yet. You giving up now? So one of the big additions that I made to the pasture this year is I spread out Redmond SR50 out here on this front field and on my little field. And for those of you that don't know, SR50 is 50% clay and 50% of their Redmond unrefined salt. Today I want to talk about the differences that I'm noticing out here and then I want to go actually take some samples and mail them off to a lab so that we can see if what I see matches what the lab sees, I guess. And because I've noticed such a change out here, this has really inspired me or made me want to find out more about what's happening on my ranch and specifically with my soil. Knowledge is power, so today we are going to try to acquire some of it. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. It's been about three months ago since I aerated this six acres and I spread the Redmond SR50 at a rate of roughly around 200 pounds per acre. 200 pounds per acre is what I was shooting for, but I'd be lying if I told you it came out perfectly because you know, it never does. On this six acres, I'm grazing about 40 adult cattle and 33 calves, and they have access to this pasture for three days at a time. After those three days are up, this field will get about 11 days to recover, and we'll go through that cycle over and over again throughout the summer. This is a schedule that my grandpa taught me to graze this field, and I don't know how many years of his life he did it, but I know that in my entire life, this is how we have always grazed this pasture. And I can't remember a time that I have seen this much forage stocked up out here. And what's even kind of cool about that is that According to the schedule that I just explained to you, they're not even due to come back into this pasture for four more days. So this will get even taller before the cattle come back in here. There's really only two things that are different this year that could explain this drastic change in pasture yield. The first one is that I turned the cows out into this field first this spring, and this is where most of them had their calves. We had a lot of late rain this year, so as you might remember, this pasture looked like a golf course. They had it picked down so short because I did not want to turn them out into the other fields until the weather started to warm up, but they needed a nice place to calve, so this was it. In other words, this pasture got abused pretty severely this spring. After I finally took the cattle off of this pasture, I gave it about a month to recover, and in that time I aerated it and I spread the Redmond SR50. In that initial month, this grass got pretty tall. In fact, it looked about like what it does now. And I figured that once I brought the rest of the cattle home from the winter pasture and started putting this in the regular grazing rotation that, you know, they'd, they'd eat pretty high on the hog for a couple rotations. But after that, they'd get the grass back down to where it was or where it usually would be. And it would just kind of be business as usual. But that's not what happened. So I'm basically down to it. It's either the change in management that has helped this pasture so much, or it's the addition of the Redmond SR50, or it's a combination of those two things working together. This is a bit strange to me because Redmond SR50 is not a fertilizer. And in fact, what it is, is a mixture of clay and unrefined salt. The clay helps the soil by greatly increasing the cation exchange capacity or CEC. Plus the clay also has trace minerals in it. The salt on the other hand has some of those trace minerals as well, although at a lower concentration, but the salt increases the conductivity in the soil, which again lends itself to increasing the cation exchange capacity. So what is cation exchange capacity? Well, to put it simply, it's the soil's ability to hold nutrients and make those available to the grass. For example, sand has a very low cation exchange capacity and 
if you were to like add fertilizer or something like that to sand, it would almost immediately get leached out because the sand is just not capable of holding on to those things that you've been adding. What I was told and what I read about the SR50 is that I should not expect a forage explosion like you would get with fertilizer because again, that's not what it is but that you might see more forage out in your field over time because it is so much more nutrient dense that the cattle don't need to eat as much of it to meet all of their daily requirements. And I just wonder if that's what I'm seeing. So rather than wonder about it, I think it'd be a lot better to take samples from this treated six acres, take some samples from an untreated part of the pasture and mail them off to a lab. And then we can compare those two samples to see if there actually is a difference. If there's actually a different plant quality in this part of the field, or was this just a management thing? Was it a environmental thing? We did have some weird weather this spring. There's really only one way to know. As long as I'm sending pasture samples in, I'm gonna send some hay samples in too. And not that that has anything to do with any of these pasture experiments, but it would just be nice to know. I've got SR50 treated pasture, non-treated pasture, and then of course my triticale hay here. So I'm gonna send these off to the lab and they can do their magic, do whatever they do. And I'm not sure how long it's gonna take to get results back on these. I'm guessing it'll be a little while, but it'll be very interesting to see what they come back with. In the meantime, I've got a little bit of SR50 left from the previous application. I didn't use quite all of what I had, so I think we should hook spreader up to the tractor and go put the rest of that out. I know there's a little spot here in the back pasture where I don't feel like the grass does that well. So I am going to intentionally put the SR50 there and we'll see in a couple of months if we can tell any difference. All right, that's all of it. Let's go spread it. All this talk about pasture samples and hay samples has got me thinking about soil samples. About a week ago, I drove around out here and I took a bunch, so I'm gonna roll the footage here. The best way to do this is to take what's called a composite sample. And basically all that is, is I'm gonna take a bunch of little samples at points all around the ranch and then I'll mix them all together and then I'll take a sample from that sample and that's what I will mail in. They recommend taking about five or six samples to form your composite sample, but really you can't take too many. In fact, the more samples that you add to make your composite, the more accurate it will be. Right now I'm gonna stay away from taking any samples out of the front field because we did apply that SR50, which is a soil conditioner. So I'm not, I don't wanna put that into these results because it might not really tell me what I wanna know. 
we're gonna sample that field separately and it will be interesting to see if there's any difference. May as well get that while we're out here too. Now that I've got all my individual shovel samples here in the bucket, I just need to mix them all up and make one big sample. It's important to break up all of these clods as best as you can because the actual sample that you send in is so small. If you had one of these big clods in there, this would account for like a third of the sample. So we wanna try to break these up to get the best composite sample that we can. Maybe I'll just take this inside and put it in the blender. See what the wife has to say about that. And about a week later, the results to that soil test are in. So let's check it out. So as you can see, I am deficient in more things than I am adequate in. And this is not really a surprise to me just because I think I've fertilized this pasture maybe once. And that was like many, many years ago. And since then, I haven't really done anything except just graze the cattle and, and go about business as usual. My pH is good, which I was kind of curious about that. I've actually always wondered about that. Um, but the pH is good out here, so that, that's something. The Redmond soil test gives you recommendations about how to fix the issues that you have, but the only problem is that those recommendations are geared more towards people that are doing these test kits on like gardens or lawns, really small plots of land, and they're not really gearing them towards someone like me that's doing this on a little bit larger acreage. Nevertheless, I have the knowledge now. I know what's going on out here in the pasture, and now I can figure out how to deal with it. So now I gotta talk to some people about a strategic timing for amendments to try to do this the right way. I don't know if it's too late this year to try to do something about it or if it's more something that I will wait and tackle in the spring. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.